right uh, okay good afternoon once again to all the participants so till yesterday's class we have done with the type study of bryophyte that is anthocyros so now we are moving to the next type study of bryophyte which is regarded as polytrichum so which here from this onwards you can see the evolution in the thallus organization into the next plants in the plant kingdom so just i am start sharing my screen i hope you all can see the screen please confirm can you see the screen over here yes ma'am we are able to yes ma'am yes thank you now so when we go for the systematic position or the taxonomic position of the polytrichum uh, so it belongs to the third class so can you tell me how many classes the bryophyte has been divided into three classes three three classes so what are they three hepaticopsida and ceratopsida yeah. and bryopsida yeah very good hepaticopsida anthoceratopsida and bryopsida okay so the type study what we are going to study today that is a polytrichum it is belonging to the third class the advanced class of the bryophytes which is called as bryopsida and it belongs to the order polytrichales and the family polytrichaceae and the genus polytrichum now so when we look into the a uh, structure of the polytrichum so you can see into the diagrammatic representation the diagram of a uh, polytrichum here this is a polytrichum plant okay now so what is the difference can you make out with the anthocyros or marcantia and this polytrichum can anybody please any one character pertaining to the thalloid plant body what is the difference you are observing in the morphology you have already studied this in your first year come on right so let me tell you so when you observe this polytrichum here you can see the thallus is emerging or it is projecting away from the substratum okay you can see here this is the uh, plant body appearing just like a stem region and the roots uh, coming from the bottom and these are the leaves which are arranged on the stem but these are not the true leaves this is not the true stem nor these are the true roots they are just like leaf stem and the uh, roots on the plant body okay so it appears just like a miniature plant a very small plant fine so now we'll go into the uh, structure so this, this uh, polytrichum also is uh, going to uh, grow in the damp soil okay shady places and so when we look into the gametophyte the plant body gametophyte we are differentiating the thallus plant body into two parts one is called as rhizome and another one is called as upright leafy shoot okay now what is a rhizome here so rhizome is the prostrate prostrate in the sense it is a part which is growing along the surface of the ground okay prostrate it will or rhizome always grow prostrate to the ground surface or sometimes it is underground also and it consists of the colorless leaves or the small brown colored uh leaf like structures which are called as scales 
and it also bears rhizoids the root like structures called as rhizoids from the basal region of the rhizome for fixation so here the generally the stem of the higher plants like pteridophytes or the angiosperms so though that is the part which has been evolved from the bryophytic rhizome part so rhizome is considered as the uh, starting or the evolutionary part which has been converted into stem of the higher plant so the, please make a note of this uh, this may like uh, ask you any uh, exam point of view rhizome is the primitive or the younger part or the first part of the bryophyte which will evolve into the stem of the higher plant groups so that we are going to observe in the polytrichum plant now next we are going for the another part what we call it as the upright leafy shoot so in this polytrichum uh, the leafy shoot leafy shoot shoot in this and this is the main axis like structure on which we can see the development of root like oh, sorry leaf like structures okay so this is a much longer and it is going to arise from the rhizome and on this main axis we call it as the central axis on the central axis we can see the arrangement of the leaves in a spiral manner so you can look into the picture over here so from the rhizome this is the upright leafy shoot okay emerging from the rhizome so even rhizome here it is divided into nodes and internodes region just like the stem now from the nodal region you can see the development of this upright leafy shoot now on this upright leafy shoot we can see the presence of the leaf like structure so this is the leaf a leaf like structure arranged spirally on the central axis spirally means surrounding the central axis okay now when we talk about the leaf structure how are the leaves we can see here they are going to have the broad base we call this as a base of the leaf this is a microscopic structure these are all can be seen only under the microscope the structure okay uh, they have a very broad base and they are green in color and whereas it is a dorsi ventral the lower part is brown in color now each leaf it is going to have a colorless sheathing leaf base and a narrow distal limb limb in the sense this one okay the central part of the leaf next midrib it also consists of a central midrib just like a midvein what is a vein actually it is the vascular tissue presence of xylem and phloem but these are non vascular plants bryophytes are non vascular plants but instead of midvein here in this leaf we can see the presence of a central line of the leaf which is called as the mid rib region and these are the leaves which are photosynthetic in nature they prepare the food material and as they are taking the role of a leaf they are not true leaves i have told you just now they are not the true leaves but instead we should call them as lamellae these are the leaves which are preparing the food material of the plant body having a central mid region and uh, they are very much long enough performing and arranged spirally on the central main axis so they are called as lamellae root uh, the roots are called as rhizoids the shoot system is represented by rhizome and the leaves are represented as lamellae 
So you can make a note of all these three points. Now, so when we talk about the internal structure, that is the anatomy, in the leaf, the leaves are the very complex internal structure we can see over here in the polytrichum. So the name itself implies here, the genera name, polytrichum. Poly means what? Can anybody? Many. <coughs> Many. Many. Trichum is referred to as leaves, hair-like structures. There are many leaves arranged spirally on the leafy shoot. So hence, the genera is named as polytrichum. Am I clear this point? Right. Now, so when we go for the internal structure here, the margins of the leaf are very thick enough. Okay, they are not very soft, just like the angiospermic leaf. It is a thick structure and it is bounded by epidermal tissue system for protection. Now, next when we go for the internally anatomy of the leaf, below the epidermis, that is below the upper epidermis, and below the lower epidermis, you can see the presence of development of sclerenchymatous tissue. So this is the first important point you people have to remember. From polytrichum from onward, that is, this is the advanced forms, I told you. In this advanced form, slowly now the development of the mechanical tissues are going to start now, which we call it as a sclerenchyma. In anthocyros or in the Marcantia, you have never come across sclerenchyma. It was only the parenchyma or the uh, just a small amount of colenchyma tissue. That's it. You have not come across any uh, mechanical tissue like uh, uh, colahypodermis or the uh, sclerenchyma tissue. But here in the polytrichum, you are going to see the presence of the development of sclerenchymatous tissue on either side of the epidermal tissue. That is from the upper epidermis and also on the lower epidermis, you can see this development of sclerenchymatous tissue. So that is very, very important here. Next. About the sclerenchymatous tissue, you can see the presence of the parenchyma cells. So these are all the parenchyma cells, which are arranged in the form of long, okay. So these, uh, you can see here, it is in the form of lamellae. So these are the long parenchymatous tissues. You can see here, thin walled parenchymatous tissue, which are arranged linearly one above the other. Okay, they are photosynthetic in nature and they are helping in performing the photosynthesis. Now, next when we go for this anatomy of the rhizome or the so-called stem-like structure, uh, when we observe here, this is the rhizome, polytrichum rhizome anatomy. Now, so on the rhizome, when you take a transfer section here, you can see the presence of an outer epidermal tissue system. And uh, in this, as I told you, it is an advanced form. The tissues, whatever you can see inside, is differentiated into outer epidermis, central cortex region, uh, that is uh, in between epidermis, and the inner medulla region. So these are the three important regions in the anatomy of the stem. So what is the important point here you people have to remember is in the medullary region, that is in the central part of the medulla, the cells are designated as hydrome and mantle. So this is a very, very important point in polytrichum. In the transverse section, the cells which are representing the hydrome, 
these are the cells which are going to conduct the water or help in the conduction of water and mineral salts whereas the central mantle region you can see here this is a mantle region in the center helpful for conducting of the food material so indirectly we can say that hydrome and mantle these are the uh, two regions helpful for synthesize or, or they are helpful for conducting of the water and the food material okay just acting like a xylem and phloem of vascular tissues so by this uh, proof or by this evidence it says that bryophytes are considered as the uh, plants which are going to evolve into vascular plants so after bryophytes what is the next division in the plant kingdom they are the pteridophytes so what are pteridophytes commonly called as vascular plants vascular cryptogams we call them as what are non vascular cryptogams non vascular cryptogams bryophytes bryophytes yes non vascular that means to say that doesn't have any vascular tissue xylem or phloem it doesn't have so non vascular cryptogams vascular cryptogams are pteridophytes they consist of xylem a well developed xylem and phloem tissue so what is the evolutionary evidence you can find over here these in the bryopsida class only you can see the development of hydrome as well as the mantle in the anatomy of the rhizome which is an evidence that hydrome is playing a role of just like the xylem and mantle is playing the role just like that of a phloem helpful in conducting the food material next the remaining cortex region is going to store the food material and from the epidermal region you can see the development of the rhizoids so that is a uh, external morphology of the gametophytic tissue and one more important point i want to tell you here is at the time of reproduction on this aerial leafy shoot or the apical leaves so whatever are going to develop on the terminal part of this leafy shoot they get modified as head region which is going to protect the sexual organs so for example on this plant if the anthridia is developed at the time of uh, reproduction if the anthridia are developed these anthridia they have been protected by this cluster of leaves so it is going to form a peculiar structure what we call it as anthridial head region a cluster of leaves surrounding the anthridia so that we call it as anthridial head region when we go for a female plant that is the development of archegonia the archegonia have been surrounded by these leaves so it called or it represented as archegonial head so that is the difference between so the by this we can say that the polytrichum is a dioecious plant that is anthridial plant is different that is the male plant is different from the female plant now so just we shall we have a recap of gametophyte again of polytrichum the gametophyte of the polytrichum consists of what consists of two regions or the two parts one is the rhizome from which one another part is going to arise which is called as upright leafy shoot from the rhizome 
the how is the rhizome here rhizome is going to be the colorless it is brown in color or it is colorless growing horizontally or prostrate to the ground surface and this rhizome uh, this from this rhizome it bears nodes and internodes from the nodal parts it develops the upright leafy shoots whereas on the uh, on the ground that is on the lower side it develops the root like structures so called rhizoids helpful for fixing the plant to the ground surface so when you go for the upright uh, leafy shoot the upright uh, leafy shoot consists of a central main axis or we call it as the central axis so which is a cylindrical like structure now on the central axis we can see the development of small elongated leaf like structures what we call it as lamellae are these are going to be arranged spirally on the central axis so there are many leaves there the, the, leaf, the number of the leaf is not one or two there are many in number so hence the genus name is represented as polytrichum now now how is the leaf structure the leaf is a sessile here it is not petiolate it is sessile it does not have any stalk so if, without stalk how is they are attaching so they going to have a broad base so broad base so with the help of this broad base they are getting attached to the uh, central axis now about this broad base you can see the green color major part of the leaf which is going to consist of a central midrib and performing the photosynthesis so this is regarding the uh, external morphology of rhizome as well as the upright root uh, leafy shoot now we have also talked about the anatomy of the rhizome as well as the anatomy of the leaf structure now we are going to the next one which we call it as the reproduction so in the polytrichum the plants are going to be reproduced with the help of vegetative reproduction and at the time and the same like sexual reproduction just like in the other bryophyte now vegetatively how this polytrichum is reproducing so it is by two methods one is called as protonema and another one is called as fragmentation now so what is the protonema what do you mean by protonema so fragmentation means what just now it occurs even in the lower bryophytes also that is uh, any gametophytic main plant due to the death or any by accidentally any part if it is getting detached so that part is going to have the uh, capacity to develop into a new plant so that i'm calling it as fragmentation now what is protonema here can anybody anybody proto proto means always referred to as the young one okay so protonema is always represented as the young gametophyte or first formed gametophyte plant body okay so this protonema is a small undifferentiated young gametophytic tissue which has been developed from the spore okay it is a filamentous protonema is always a filamentous structure multicellular branch representing the younger gametophyte so it is going to be developed from the spore the spores which are formed by the uh, capsule or the sporophytic generation those spores on germination first they give rise to protonema after that the protonema will grow and develop into the gametophyte 
Okay, so this is how the vegetative reproduction is going to be carried out. Now, when we go for the sexual reproduction, the sexual reproduction, when we talk about here, just now I told you the polytrichum is a dioecious plant. Dioecious in the sense, antheridia, that is a male plant, is different from the female plant. So they both uh, are separate. The, which is regarded as the male plant, which is consisting of the male sexual organ, antheridia, and the female plant, which is going to develop the female sexual organs, which we call it as archegonia. So they both are different. So hence it is called as the dioecious plant. Now, so when we talk about first thing, the male plant, so in the pre just now in the previous slide, I have told you that at the time of reproduction, these antheridia, they are always developed on the tips of the leafy shoot, upright leafy shoot. They develop at the apical region or the tip of the leafy shoot. And these uh, antheridia, the male sexual organs, they are surrounded by or they are protected by the cluster of leaves. Cluster means, cluster means group. So the antheridia, they are not exposed directly to the environment, but later they are surrounded, they are protected by the group of leaves at that apical region. So the structure here, it represents just like a flower-like structure on the plant body. So these, uh, the leaves, the cluster of the leaves and the antheridia, they together form the antheridial head. So here you can look into the picture here. At the time of reproduction, this is the antheridia, which are going to be surrounded by the leaves. These are the leaves. And here, these leaves are designated as perigonial leaves. Peri means surrounding. Gonial means they are surrounding the gamete producing organs. So that's why it is called as perigonial leaves. So how are these perigonial leaves are arranged? They are spirally arranged around the antheridia. Next. So it forms the antheridial head. So the antheridial head along with the antheridia, we can also see certain uh, structures which are called as paraphysis. Now, what are these paraphyses? These are long elongated hair-like structures which are hygroscopic in nature. They, uh, that is, they are going to store the water in them, helpful for dispersion of the anthrozoids or the male gametes. Now, so when we talk about the antheridial structure, so this is an antheridial structure which is a club-shaped and it is going to consist of a small stalk and, uh, and surrounded by a jacket layer. And inside this uh, antheridia, you can see the development of the androcyte mother cells. Now these androcytes mother cells, they will undergo division and produce the antherozoids or they will produce the antherozoids. Okay, the male gametes which are biflagellated, that is it going to consist of two flagella. So this is an uh, antheridial head structure. Epical region where all the leaves are arranged in a cluster forming a group, uh, forming a uh, what we call it as a rosette-like manner, arranged in a rosette-like manner or spirally surrounding the central long club-shaped antheridia. And along with the antheridia, you can see some small hair-like structures along with it, which we call it as the paraphysis. So that is the structure of the antheridium or the antheridial head. 
so when we talk about the anthridia structure here uh the anthridial structure just now i told you it is a long club shaped one and producing a small stalk having a small stalk at the base and uh, covered by the jacket layer and internally it consists of androcyte mother cells which will undergo division and producing the biflagellated biflagellated sperms or the spermatozoids next thing is when it now female plant okay just now we talked about the male gametophyte now we are going to talk about the female gametophyte so in the female gametophyte plant here also we are going to see the female sexual organ that is the archegonia which are developed at the time of reproduction and these archegonia are also surrounded by the cluster of leaves forming the archegonial head am i clear so anthridial head is the one which is surrounding the anthridia whereas the archegonial head is the one which is going to surround the archegonia so there is a one difference here the anthridial head the leaves which are going to surround the anthridial head they are called as uh, perichaetal leaves so here we call it as perigonial leaves in the male plant so in the male plant that is in the anthridial head the leaves which are surrounding the anthridia they are designated as perigonial leaves whereas in the archegonial head the leaves which are surrounding the archegonia they are represented as perichaetal leaves and here we can see only the development of only the archegonia we can't see any paraphysis in the archegonial head so that is the difference you people have to remember in the archegonial head only the development of archegonia the number is around 3 to 6 and it does not consist of any paraphysis which is very very important whereas in the anthridial head along with the anthridia we are going to see the presence of long hair like structures which we call them as paraphysis which are hygroscopic that is they are absorbing the water and they are helping these paraphyses they help in the dispersal of the male gametes the anthrozoites at the time of fertilization so that's a important point perichaetal leaves in the archegonial head whereas perigonial leaves in the anthridial head and the number of anthridia over there they are only either 4 to 5 but here in the archegonial head the archegonia which are flask shaped structure they develop around 3 to 6 in number surrounded by the perichaetal leaves and these archegonia they consist of a stalk at the base and uh, having a globose venter so here you can see this is a small stalk this is a globose venter and uh, in the polytrichum we can see the peculiar structure or a very important structure here is the neck is very long and elongated so that is very very important so whereas in marcantia as well as anthocyros the neck is not such much long it is very small enough but in polytrichum we can see a huge long development of the neck cells or the neck canal cells okay and the venter consists of the venter canal cell and the female gamete which is called as the egg cell am i clear now so at the time of fertilization that is uh, when the both the sexual organs gets mature uh, the anthrozoites are released from the anthridial head with the help of paraphyses they are released into the surrounding environment and uh, the female that is in the archegonial head the ventral canal cell 
in the archegonia, the ventral canal cell and the neck canal cells, they are going to dissolve and forming a mucilage. So this mucilage will come out of the neck in the form of a, uh, uh, in the form of a drop or a water drop like structure through which it is getting uh, attracted, okay? To that water drop or the, through that uh, mucilaginous drop, the spermatozoids or the anthrozoids they are attracted towards the archegonia or the archegonial head. So through that water drop, the anthrozoids will be uh, taken up by the archegonia and one of the uh, anthrozoid will swim down the neck region and will reach the venter and it fuses with the egg which is present in the venter and forms in the and it will fertilize with it and result in the formation of a diploid zygote which is called as oospore in the only trichome. Either we can call it as a zygote or we can call it as an oospore. Okay, so this is up to the fertilization. So next is sporophyte development. We'll look in the next class. Just I'm stop sharing here. Okay, so any queries over here? Any questions? So the main important point to people have to remember in polytrichum is the structure of the gametophyte which is somewhat complex and highly evolved when compared to the lower bryophytes, which is designated as rhizome and the upper leafy shoot structure. And uh, the internally in the rhizome, the transfer section, we can see the development of hydrome as well as the mantle, which are uh, considered as the xylem tissue and the phloem tissue of the higher vascular plants. And another important point is uh, at the time of reproduction, the development of anthridial head of the male plant and the development of the archegonial head in the female plant. Yes, anything to be repeated here? Anything to be asked for me? Okay then, right. So please you can put in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask me the questions or any doubts to be answered. Right, okay then. Uh, thank you everybody. See you in your next class.